In the twilight of prehistory, a spiritual practice emerged as old as humanity itself, shamanism. Rooted in the Paleolithic era, when humans began to express their cognitive and artistic prowess on the walls of caves, shamanism took its first breath. It was an epoch where the line between the physical and spiritual world was blurred, and shamans, the spiritual navigators, were born. These shamans were not beings, they were chosen by the spirits themselves, often through dreams or near-death experiences. They were the seers, the healers, the storytellers, and the wisdom keepers, all rolled into one. They were the ones who could traverse mysterious realm of the spirits, seeking guidance and knowledge to aid their tribes. Their role was paramount in the survival and prosperity of their community. They were the intermediaries, bridging the chasm between the human and spiritual world. In times of illness, they would journey into the spirit, battling malevolent entities to restore the afflicted spiritual balance. In times of scarcity, they would invoke the spirits of nature, pleading for their benevolence. The shamans were the custodians of their tribe's spiritual legacy, passing down their wisdom and practices through generations. They were the bedrock of their society, their wisdom shaping the moral and social fabric of their communities. But shamanism was not confined to a single region or culture. From the icy landscape Siberia, to the dense jungles of the Amazon, from the towering of the Himalayas, to the vast plains of Africa, shamanism took root. Each culture adding its unique flavor to this ancient spiritual practice. As we venture into the depths of time, shamanism continues to evolve, adapting to the changing landscapes of human civilization. It weaves its way through history, surviving the ebb and flow of empires, religions and ideologies, but at its core it remains the same, a spiritual practice that reveres the interconnectedness of all life, a testament to humanity's eternal quest for understanding and connection with the cosmos. If you're enjoying this journey through time, don't forget to like, subscribe and help our channel grow. Thanks for your support. Shamanism permeated the tapestry of ancient civilizations from the steppes of Asia to the jungles of the Americas. The Mongols, a nomadic people from the vast steppes of Central Asia, were deeply rooted in shamanic traditions. The shaman, or boo as they called it, was a revered figure, an intermediary between the human world and the spirit realm. With rhythmic drumming and fervent chants, the boo would enter a trance-like state, journeying into the spirit world to seek guidance or healing for their tribe. Across the Pacific in the dense forests and expansive plains of the Americas, Native American tribes held their own shamanic practices. The shaman, often known as a medicine man or woman, was a pillar of their community. They were healers, advisors, and spiritual leaders, harnessing the power of nature and the spirits to guide their people. Their rituals often involved the use of sacred plants, such as peyote and tobacco, to facilitate spiritual journeys and divine visions. Meanwhile, in the diverse landscapes of Africa, shamanic traditions flourished among numerous tribes. The African shaman, often referred to as a Sangoma or Nganga, was a master of the spiritual realm. They would commune with ancestral spirits, invoking their wisdom and power to heal, bless, or even curse. Their rituals were vibrant and intense, often involving rhythmic dancing, drumming, and the use of potent herbs and roots. Though separated by vast distances and cultural differences, these ancient civilizations were united in their shamanic practices. They all recognized the shaman as a bridge between the physical world and the spiritual realm, a conduit for the wisdom and power of the spirits. Their rituals, while varied in form and function, all served to connect their communities with the unseen forces of the universe. These ancient practices, while distinct, all shared the core belief of the shaman as a spiritual conduit. As empires rose and fell, shamanism adapted, endured and even thrived. The tapestry of history is rich with examples of how shamanic practices wove themselves into the cultural fabric of powerful empires, punctuating the narratives of the Roman, Persian and Chinese dynasties. In the heart of Rome, the vestiges of shamanic influence can be found in their pantheon of gods and goddesses, as well as the augurs who, like shamans, interpreted omens and signs from the natural world. 
These augurs wielded significant influence, their prophecies shaping the decisions of emperors and generals, akin to the role of a shaman within a tribe. Moving east to the sprawling Persian Empire, Zoroastrianism, one of the world's oldest continuously practiced religions, bore undeniable traces of shamanic roots. The Magi, the priestly caste in Zoroastrianism, performed rituals and ceremonies to commune with the divine, a practice parallel to that of shamans in other cultures. Finally, let's journey to the Far East, to the age-old Chinese dynasties. Here, shamanism was deeply entrenched in the form of wisdom. The Wu, often women, served as intermediaries between the human and spiritual realms, conducting rituals for healing, divination and guidance, echoing the universal roles of shamans across the globe. Yet it wasn't always a harmonious coexistence. There were times when shamanic practices faced suppression, as empires sought to consolidate power and control religious expression. But shamanism, with its deep roots and adaptability, weathered these storms, often morphing and blending with dominant religions, ensuring its survival and continued influence. Shamanism's resilience is a testament to its integral role in human spirituality. Its practices and principles, its connection to nature and the spiritual realm, transcended the rise and fall of empires, proving its universal appeal and timeless relevance. Despite the ebb and flow of empires, shamanism's spiritual flame never extinguished. As we delve deeper into the annals of history, we'll see how shamanism continued to shape societies, even in the face of monumental changes and challenges. In the shadow of the Middle Ages, shamanism faced both suppression and integration, and a surprising similarity with necromancy emerged. As the world was swept by the powerful tides of Christianity and Islam, the spiritual landscape was forever altered. Shamanism, with its deep roots in the natural world and the unseen realms, found itself at a crossroads. This period, often marked by religious fervor and rigid dogma, posed a significant challenge for shamanic practices and also brought to light its parallels with necromancy, the practice of communicating with the dead. The Christian Church in particular viewed both shamanism and necromancy as forms of paganism, often demonizing its practitioners and doing everything in its power to extinguish their influence. Islam, on the other hand, often absorbed elements of shamanic practices into its own, creating a unique hybrid of spiritual expression. The shamans, much like necromancers in their role as intermediaries, often communicate with the spirits of the deceased. In spite of this, shamanism was far from extinguished. In fact, it adapted, as it had done for countless generations before. It was this adaptability, this resilience, that allowed shamanism to survive and even thrive during these tumultuous times. Shamanic practices and necromantic rituals were often hidden within the folds of the dominant religions, their essence preserved in stories, rituals and symbols that could be passed down through the generations. In places like Siberia, shamanic traditions and their necromantic counterparts remained relatively untouched, acting as a spiritual stronghold amidst the religious upheaval. Here, shamans continued to serve as mediators between the human and spirit worlds, their rituals and practices largely unchanged from ancient times. In other parts of the world, shamanic elements were subtly incorporated into the dominant religions. Christian and Islamic mystics, for example, often drew upon shamanic techniques and necromantic rituals to induce altered states of consciousness and commune with the divine. In this way, shamanism and necromancy continued to influence and be influenced by the currents of the time. The Middle Ages then were not the end for shamanism or necromancy, but rather a period of transformation. A time when the old ways were forced to adapt or perish and in doing so proved their enduring power and relevance. Shamanism and necromancy in their resilience continued to shape and be shaped by the spiritual landscape. In the modern age, shamanism continues to thrive, adapting to the challenges and opportunities of a globalized world. As the world entered the 20th century, shamanism began to re-emerge from the shadows the dawn of the 20th century saw renewed interest in indigenous cultures and their spiritual practices. Anthropologists, explorers and spiritual seekers journeyed to remote corners of the world, bringing back tales of shamans and their mystical ways. 
In the mid-20th century, the counterculture movement embraced shamanism as a means of spiritual exploration and self-discovery. The integration of shamanic practices into the fabric of the counterculture was a sign of the times, reflecting a broader societal shift towards the exploration of alternative spiritualities and modes of consciousness. As the century wore on, shamanism found further resonance in the burgeoning New Age movement. This broad, eclectic spiritual movement, shaped by a desire for personal growth and transformation, found in shamanic practices a wellspring of ancient wisdom. Today, shamanism continues to evolve, its practices intermingling with modern modes of psychotherapy. Shamanic journeying, for instance, is seen as a form of guided meditation that can aid in healing and personal growth. Similarly, the shamanic concept of soul retrieval has found a place in trauma therapy, offering a metaphorical framework for the healing of deep-seated emotional wounds. Yet even as shamanism adapts to the modern world, it remains resolutely rooted in the ancient wisdom of our ancestors. It continues to draw upon the fundamental understanding that we are intimately connected to the world around us, that there is a deeper spiritual dimension to existence that transcends the material world. In the 21st century, shamanism is both an echo of our ancient past and a beacon for our future. It offers a path that navigates the complexity of our modern lives, calling us back to a simpler, more grounded understanding of our place in the world. Shamanism, ever resilient, continues to lend its voice to the chorus of human spirituality. From the primal drumbeat to the psychedelic journey, shamanic practices span a broad and diverse spectrum. The shaman's toolkit is vast, and while each practice varies across cultures and eras, they all share the common aim of connecting with the spiritual world to bring about healing, guidance and insight. At the heart of shamanic practice is the healing ritual. This ceremony, often punctuated by rhythmic drumming or the use of sacred instruments, is a method of restoring balance to the individual or community. The shaman might invoke the aid of spirit allies, harness the power of symbolic objects, or perform a hands-on healing to alleviate physical or emotional distress. Divination is another cornerstone of shamanic practice. Whether through the casting of bones, the interpretation of dreams, or the observation of natural phenomena, shamans reach into the unseen realms to gather wisdom and information. These practices are not merely a means to predict the future, but a way to understand the present and navigate the path ahead. Then there is soul journeying, a deeply transformative practice that involves the shaman entering a trance state to journey into the spirit world. Whether they're retrieving a lost soul piece, consulting with spirit guides or navigating the realms of the dead, these journeys are an integral part of the shaman's role as an intermediary between the physical and spiritual planes. And let's not forget the sacred plants, the psychoactive allies that have been used by shamans for millennia to induce visionary states and facilitate deep healing. From the ayahuasca vine of the Amazon to the peyote cactus of the North American deserts, these plants are revered as teachers and healers, opening doors to realms beyond ordinary perception. These practices, diverse as they are, all serve the shaman's role as a bridge between worlds. They are the tools and techniques that enable the shaman to navigate the unseen realms, to bring back wisdom and healing, and to help their community thrive in a world that is, in every sense, alive and enchanted. From the dawn of humanity to the modern age, shamanism has been a constant companion in our spiritual journey. We've traced its origins back to the earliest human societies, where it served as a bridge between the physical and spiritual realms. Throughout the epochs, from ancient civilizations to the Age of Empires, shamanism proved resilient. It adapted, evolved and thrived, leaving its imprint on cultures worldwide. In the Middle Ages, despite shifts in religious landscapes, shamanism persisted, often under the guise of folklore and mysticism. Even in our modern world, shamanism's echoes reverberate, its practices and principles finding new homes in contemporary spiritual movements. We've explored a spectrum of shamanic practices, each unique, yet bound by the common thread of seeking connection and understanding. As we continue to explore our spiritual landscape, shamanism remains a testament to our timeless quest for connection and understanding.